Hi everybody, Liz and Annie back again with more videos. So as Annie mentioned in an earlier video that we shared, uh, UCR is finally making the slow transition to using Canvas as the LMS instead of Blackboard. So we have both been lucky to be involved in the pilot rollout of this for the last couple of quarters. So uh, one of my classes this past fall, one of my classes over the summer was hosted in Canvas instead of in uh, I learned the UCR instance of Blackboard, and Annie's had a couple classes that were in Canvas as well. And I'm getting set up for teaching in the winter quarter when we come back from the winter break. And uh, the Excite people have already published, or not published, but have set up people's Canvas sites if people are part of the winter quarter Canvas pilot so that your courses, your course shell should appear, which means all of us as instructors can go in and start to populate the courses without actually sharing them with the students who are enrolled in the classes in the next few weeks. So we want to make sure everybody knows how to do that, especially if people are uh, either teaching remotely for the first time uh, in the whole like I don't know, nine, eight, nine months that everyone has been shifting to this like remote format. I know some of our colleagues are teaching undergraduate courses or big lecture classes for the very first time and are thinking about how they're gonna set up their course sites and then people may be new to using Canvas as well. So we're gonna try to demystify it as much as possible. Uh, we've just been chatting today about how there's a little bit of a learning curve. So like Canvas overall, we think is much more user-friendly than Blackboard, and I think everyone will like it, but there's just a couple things to keep in mind that you have to do that maybe you didn't have to do before in Blackboard, so we're trying to point those out. Okay, so over here you can see I'm already logged into my Canvas site. So the URL is elearn.ucr.edu. You'll have to authenticate when you log in, and you can see in my dashboard I have published courses and unpublished courses. So I have two card course, course cards up here that are published from a summer class I taught as part of the pilot and then a fall class that I taught to undergraduates as part of the pilot. And then down here I have my winter class and I've already uh, followed Annie's tutorial that she made in the other video to like populate this with a picture so that it's a little more engaging or entertaining, at least for me to look at when I'm the instructor logging into my course site. So it's me and Annie looking adorable right here. So I'm gonna show you uh, things that you're gonna to need to know about setting up your course. Some of these are already gonna be in there kind of by default, but you might wanna check them, especially because there's, um, a lot of kind of admin shutdown stuff that's gonna be happening over the winter break this year. And so we all as instructors need to make sure that we're ready to deploy our courses for the January 4 start of winter quarter. So to do that, I'm gonna click on the course card here on the title and it's gonna take me into my course page. I have not done anything at all in terms of setting this up. I have not created modules. We'll do this in other videos that we're planning to make. Uh, but what I can do is come down here to settings and I'm gonna check out the course details to make sure that everything looks okay. So the first thing, and kind of like that split of the course cards on my landing page, on my dashboard, is whether the course is published or unpublished. And publishing is a really important thing to understand about how Canvas operates in general in terms of the assignments and the things that students are gonna to need to be able to access and the course in general. So even though we all have our course shells built for us and established for us in Canvas, they are not published yet, which means the instructors and TA should have access, but the instructors are gonna to need to kind of flesh out the modules, how you want your course set up. And when you're done creating the course shell, for your class, even if it's only the first week, even if you don't wanna work that far ahead into the winter quarter, you have to go in and publish the class so that your students who are enrolled are able to access it. If you don't do that, it won't show up for them on their dashboard. So they'll be able to access the eLearn site, the Canvas site, but they won't be able to get into your specific course and it won't show up as anything that they're even part of. So this is just something we wanna make sure people understand that they are responsible for doing and doing ideally about a week before winter quarter starts so that students who are enrolled can start to get familiar with uh, the assignment rhythm or the schedule and the expectations and that kind of thing if you have it ready to go. Okay, so right now my course is unpublished, which is what I want because I haven't put anything in the shell yet. I've uploaded this image, which was the first and most important thing of me and Annie. Uh, I wanna scroll down and check out all the parameters. So these uh, availability dates are the other important thing that we wanna highlight for you in this video. So this was set for me by default as available. So basically this will appear in enrolled students dashboards if I've published it January 4th at midnight. So at 12 a.m. January 4th. So the Sunday night essentially before the winter quarter starts. I'm gonna end up changing this. I'm actually gonna 
I'm gonna put it a little bit earlier. I'm gonna make it, for now, I'm gonna make it New Year's Day instead. So like my internal goal for myself as I set up my courses for next quarter would be to make sure everything is ready to go before this time. So students have the weekend before they come back for winter quarter to start to get familiar with what this class is gonna be and take a look at the syllabus. Okay, the end date is also set for me already. And it's set as uh, March 13th. So I might ask Annie to like look this up. I'm not sure if that is the Friday of week 10 or the Friday of finals week of winter quarter, March 13th at midnight. So uh, she's gonna check that out. We had an issue, It is okay. It, we had an issue with Canvas, the pilot Canvas stuff this quarter, fall, where they had kind of a priori populated the end date of availability for everybody's Canvas classes as the Friday of week 10. So that meant the, uh, classes disappeared from students' dashboards before the weekend beginning finals week. So that created a lot of confusion, obviously, for students who were in classes that were using the Canvas pilot. Um, we got, you know, an email update explaining how you can go in and set the availability to extend the dates so your students could access your course. But you want to double check that this is actually set to the end of the term instead of the end of the 10 weeks of instruction. This one is not. This is the end of week 10 also. Oh, so you need to okay. extend it a week. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and make it uh, the 20th. Okay. Oh, and it's giving me, what is this? Oh, okay. It's giving me a little warning. It's like, oh, you want your course to end at midnight. Now think about that, instructors. That means it's actually the day before the date that you have on here. So that's good to know. It's good that it's flagging that for you. Okay, students can only participate in the course between these dates. Yes, that would make sense. Just make sure that like whatever the window is that you determine for your course includes all of the 10 weeks of instruction and up until the point beyond which you have administered your final, your students will be done with everything that they need to access your actual course site to complete in the class. Uh, and then uh, you can decide here, these checkboxes have to do with whether students can see it before the start date, the availability like opening window, assuming you have published the course and then after the course end date. So you can basically um, take away their ability to come back and look at anything that you may have posted in your Canvas site. Okay, uh, that's all we wanted to show you for this video. We'll be back soon later today with a lot more stuff.